just because we haven't seen something like this before doesn't mean we should stay away. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 weirdest shows currently playing on TV. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be taking a look at 2018 TV series with unusual and far out there plots. If the show is over the top, overly graphic, features a weird premise, or just plain feels different, it's eligible for this list. Number 10. Final Space If a show features an adorable sidekick, a little green ball of cuteness that has enough power in it to actually destroy planets, then it's on the right track. Oh, and to boot, its name is Mooncake. Okay, let's get you in here. You ready? Chuckity. Final Space is an animated sci-fi adventure comedy, executive produced by Conan O'Brien, that tells the story of an astronaut seeking the meaning of the universe and saving it when it's in danger. The cast includes heavy hitters like David Tennant and Fred Armisen. There are definitely new and exciting things waiting for us in upcoming seasons. Number 9. Happen Leonard You didn't tell me she was a contortionist. Name one contortionist that ain't crazy. How many contortionists you know? One, and she's crazy. This show often seems like an old choose-your-own-adventure type book you used to read as a kid. Or hey, still do. And it is based on a series of novels, after all. Only if you're still a kid, you should probably not watch this show. Happ and Leonard, two amateur investigators, are fully thought-out individuals. That make them some of the realest characters on TV. I look like a fool to you, and then some. We get to know them, and all their very weird quirks. Not to mention swamps, psychopaths, lost treasure, and a whole lot of adventure. Wanna see a few words? No, I'm good. Number 8. American Gods Incredible visuals, with a lot of just plain weird things happening on screen at a time, will have you raising your curious eyebrows when watching Neil Gaiman's American Gods. I'm a leprechaun. Okay, you're a little tall for a leprechaun. That's a stereotype. The show features literal personified gods walking around in our world. Complete CG sequences, scenes that make us uncomfortable, and leave us with our mouths wide open litter the show, as we discover more and more gods and what they're really up to and how much power they have. Each episode is a cinematic treat filled with discoveries. What should I call you if I was so inclined? Shadow Moon. Oh my boy, that is one outstandingly improbable name. Shadow Moon? Moon Shadow. Goddamn hippie parents. Number 7. Preacher. Vampires. Cowboys. God. Satan. Hitler. What more can you want in a series based on a comic book? And co-produced by Seth Rogen. We follow a preacher on his journey to find the aforementioned God, and not in the spiritual sense. How dare you question your God? How dare you? No. A lot of plot developments tumble around in the earlier half of the first season, with no real overarching momentum clearly presenting itself. But it's a slow build that leaves us eager for each new episode. Put the gun in your mouth. Overall, the show is a dark and entertaining ride, with great action scenes and some comedic moments. We are constantly surprised at where the next episode takes us. Yep, it's straight to hell. You think your worst memory is bad? You think that's torture? We can make it worse. Number 6. Baskets We all aspire to be something in life, right? Maybe you're striving to become an airline pilot, or a school teacher, or a chef. Lots of great careers to sacrifice for. Clowns have to... We have to urinate outside. Well, this show, co-developed by Zach Galifianakis and the now-scorned Louis C.K., has Zach's character Chip Baskets aspiring to be a clown. Potentially creepy, right? But it makes him happy. It also makes the viewers happy, as it sets up some hilariously odd TV. You'll always find something to enjoy from Baskets, even if you suffer from crippling coulrophobia. Or not. <laughs> Number 5. The Good Place We have to admit it, dying and going to a TV representation of what heaven would be like is a good concept. Heaven and hell are usually portrayed in grand epic scales with hundred million dollar budgets, so it's refreshing to see them in a sitcom scenario. Kristen Bell plays the outcast on a journey of self-improvement, helped along by the delightfully cast Ted Danson. 
You're pulling an Eleanor. Posting my cousin's credit card number on Reddit because she said I looked tired? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and if you thought the first season was peculiar, the second just amps up things a lot more, thanks to a completely unsuspected plot twist in season one, which we'd go to the bad place if we revealed. What is the bad place like? Oh, sorry. That is the one topic I'm not allowed to tell you about. I can only play you a brief audio clip of what is happening there right now. Okay. <laughs> Number four, Atlanta. At first glance, you'll think you're just watching a simple story of a rapper trying to make his way up in the world. It'd be very easy to make a drama simply based on that, but Atlanta takes it to the next level. Come on, dog. <laughs> How are you broke on payday? What are you, 12 years a slave? Yeah, my name is 12 years a slave the slave. At times it feels like we're watching a weird, surreal parallel version of our own world. And when the show hits those marks, that's when it really shines. I'm not Alonzo. I'm gonna make sure that you die homeless. Mysterious beings, sci-fi technology, and downright creepy scenes abound. But it's still about our very real world. Donald Glover is a magical realism visionary. What the hell is this? This is my father. Number three, Counterpart. Anything with parallel universes and multiple versions of oneself is weird from the get-go. She was a sister. Stop it. Twin. A sister with the same name? Is that what you expect me to believe? Counterpart has movie-quality action, effects and stunts, and the great J.K. Simmons. It's a unique viewing experience. Conventionally, with a show like this, we'd be knee-deep in heavy sci-fi themes. But instead, what we get is the traditional framing premise, but enriched with some deep character studies and a mystery that keeps us constantly guessing and impatient for the next development. It also makes us wonder what our own alternate version of ourself would be like. Well, this is disappointing. Number 2. Legion If Doctor Strange was, well, stranger than the rest of the Marvel movies, Legion is the same for Marvel shows, only even weirder and more psychedelic. Whether or not David, aka Legion, has schizophrenia or dissociative personality disorder, he has almost limitless power, that's for sure. He is the son of Charles Xavier, after all. The voices he hears in his head, crazy ideas and violent outbursts, accompanied by dance numbers, make Legion a very unpredictable yet exciting show to watch. David? What sets this show apart from the other Marvel TV outings is that it feels less like a superhero series and more like a psychological thriller. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Like, like we were in a dream or something, right? <coughs> Bless you. Why is that woman holding that tiny shrunken man? You mean, why is that mother carrying her adorable baby? That's a baby? I can't believe you just went out and bought yourself a Range Rover. I've been wanting one ever since this morning. Number one, Happy. There is a lot to take in here. Happy, co-written by comics auteur Grant Morrison, stars Christopher Maloney, whom you may know as Elliot Stabler from Law & Order Special Victims Unit as ex-cop turned hitman Nick Sachs. Sachs, in addition to his resume, also happens to have been resuscitated from near death, only to be able to see and have contact with an imaginary blue talking and flying winged horse. Now there's a phrase you don't get to hear every day. I'm happy! The happy horse, 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 so full of fun, of course, of course! It's plain to see, it's fun to be happy! <laughs> Gory and surreal, this funny yet disturbing crime dramedy doesn't aim to please everyone but its target audience. And boy, are we pleased. Get the hell out of here. Comprendo? It's comprende. It's Spanish. I know it's Spanish! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.